County and we understand he would jump at the chance of a return north. Crossing the Dundee Divide would not be a problem as Scott has previously worked as a coach at United between different spells at Dens Park. Well, joining me in the studio this afternoon is Bobby Williamson, who will be talking about his own club in a few minutes. But first, Bobby, two games gone and already a casualty. Are you surprised? I'm very disappointed, actually, when I, when I read the papers this morning that Paul was actually wrapped up. He's, he's never been a quitter all through his career, and uh, hopefully it was a heat-of-the-moment thing, and uh, he'll come to his senses and get back in there and get involved again. Something's obviously got to him, because towards the end of last season he was unhappy. We thought he was OK during the summer, but yesterday he's decided he's had enough. Yeah, I can understand it. It's a very frustrating job at times, but um, he loves it. He loves football, and uh, I'm sure he, once he thinks about it, he'll come back into it again, I'm sure. Well, we'll see Hopefully. what the next 24 hours will bring. Well, Bobby's main concern yesterday was a visit to Rugby Park of the Champions Rangers after Killy had kicked off the season with a win at Love Street last Saturday. The promise beforehand was that Kilmarnock would have a real go at Rangers and that's exactly how it turned out. Match commentator Archie McPherson. It's a place where Rangers have positively harvested points in the past, unbeaten here in the last 12 visits, but statistics don't tell the whole story for any time Scott Sports has been here. The games have been tense and close and gone right down to the wire, and it will hardly startle us if we're in for the same today. Kelly had a very good away win at Love Street last week, and with uh, Ian Durant out with a hamstring injury, they bring in Peter Canero as the only change, which means the footballing rehabilitation of Andy McLaren who started his career with Dundee United, continues apace. And you have to hope a talented lad like this has put his problems behind him. Rangers haven't been making their fans drool at the mouth of late, and they bring in Serge Perini, who wasn't in the squad against St. Johnson. They give Neil McCann a starting position. He came on as a sub last week and continue with Billy Dodds, something of a recent saviour who spurns talk of big striker signings by acting as a salvage expert. And the referee today is Tom Brown from Edinburgh. Well, the only people favouring Rangers at the moment seem to be the bookies. Still making them odds on favourites to win this championship, and of course you very rarely see an impoverished bookie, so they know something about the business, however. The Rangers form has been far from impressive and they're up against the side determined to do much better than of late and that's Rickson trying to control the ball on what is a very slippery surface because it's been a kind of smur rain over the last hour. Gilly full of aggression at the moment. Mahood puts that down and out comes close. Had to take that cleanly. Waterman. Ferguson seeing plenty of space in the right hand side. Now Reyna. Well, Reyna delayed that far too long, allowing the cover to take place. Killy on the break again. Ball just kept in. Oh, that's a penalty kick. Yes. No question, Quantumman really taken on in the outside by Andy McLaren, the man we mentioned right at the start. Penalty kick, no complaints, as he keeps the right leg trailing. So, McLaren, I think, will take the responsibility himself. This is how it came about. Neat little jig, that's typical McLaren play. We used to see him do that a lot for the Lee United. I talked about rehabilitation, this will take him a stride forward, yes! Got it, Rangers, from the word go with aggression, and that is a delighted player. No wonder. As I said, he's come through huge personal problems, and he takes his chance with a plomb, sending the Rangers goalkeeper the wrong way. Maruso, not quite getting there now, two against two. Coca. Amoroso keeping his eye on the ball, and Kontemann is there, and that's almost put past his own keeper. That is a very shaky-looking Rangers defence at the moment. And clearly Kontemann finding it difficult to adapt in the middle of that defence, has witnessed that one. Taken 
by McLaren again. That wasn't far away. Well, Kokar is looking extremely sharp. And I think what was good about this was not just the finishing effort, but the way he crept in there from a difficult angle, tried to curl it round. But he... And it goes to Dodds. Easily taken away. And there's a beautiful boot follow to McLaren again. Great run forward by the lad. And it's in again. His second goal. Astonishingly, the Rangers defence ripped apart right down the middle, but what an astute run by Andy McLaren. Nine and a half minutes gone, beautiful ball played forward there. Now this required the finest finish yet. One-to-ones can sometimes, well, he almost got to close, and Rangers at this stage staggered. Well, there's Bobby Williamson sitting uh, amongst his directors, who must be very pleased as he is with this uh, two-goal lead. He must be enjoying himself, Bobby. Still McCann. Too tight from Wallace. There's Wallace again. Free kick, I think, as McCann tried to go through. Free kick to Rangers, and here they will be missing Albert. In there by McGowan, and he can't have any complaints about this. I think there's a booking, in fact, for McGowan for that. Abaruso in the net, straight against the defensive wall, and easily cleared. No wonder he's looking stern. Al Ferguson. Played well to the side. McCann had come up to Van Bronckhurst. And now just over, Wallace. We have now played uh, 31 minutes, and this, you could say, the clearest chance Rangers have had in all that time. And Wallace slightly mistiming it, not getting up and above the ball, but clearly underneath it. There's McCann. With that well to Ferguson, Van Bronckhurst on towards Wallace. And I think he's already been booked. Now that is a bookable offence. Uh, nobody wants to see a, a player set off in any game, but look at that. That is a yellow card, and uh, really, I think he's very fortunate to stay on. It would have been a terrible blow to Kamara, but I think the referee has been very charitable. Or is he changing his mind? Yes, he is off. Harsh as it would be in terms of the way that Komarik have had superiority. It was technically just. And Rockhurst. McCann, lovely little turn, goes on the outside. And it's a penalty kick to Burt. Tried to take him on the outside, and the referee, Tom Brown, points to the penalty spot. Yes, that's a penalty kick. So, Billy Dodds. There it goes, Rangers have pulled themselves back. And Andy McLaren knows Billy Dodds very well. Said uh, this is something of a salvage expert. It could uh, be that again today. Edge Rangers leave it to the wee fellow to score his fifth goal, fifth competitive goal, in no uncertain manner. Well, no wonder Williamson, who's been up in the director's box, has come down now. He can't believe this. His team well in front, well in top, and then two incidents brings it back to this. A ragged sort of ending to an astounding first 45 minutes. And there it goes, while Rangers having been outplayed for so much of that uh, first half. Strongly back in it again, and Andy McLaren goes up the tunnel. And up until about 10 minutes before halftime, he must have been feeling 10 feet tall with his contribution. And we should be in for a spectacular second.
second half. Well, referee Tom Brown was roundly booed by the Kamarok supporters when he came on there. And I'm sure Jim in the studio will be looking very carefully at why he took so long to make that booking, that second booking of Kevin McGurn. I thought it was a booking, but you wonder, was he pressurised? Had he made up his mind? I think it uh, perplexes us, and uh, there's the Rangers sub at the start of this half. Konchelskis with Fernando Rickson off. Here is Konchelskis. I think that was a bit of obstruction, free kick. Well, effectively, he has put uh, Reyna way back on the right-hand side, where Rickson was, with uh, Konchelskis just in front of him, going for it, as it were. And out of Ferguson. There's Dodds. McCann. Great run by McCann. It's in and it had to be taken by Gordon Marshall first time. The next penetration, at least McCann is getting outside the commander defence and getting to the line. Konchelska is not as successful on the other side. You can see he's trying to use his pace simply and effectively. Dodge. Ferguson. Well, that's a very good save again as three Rangers players waiting for a little mistake. and bearing down in goal effectively. Here's Konchelskis. Did well to get that to the line at all. Gus McPherson is there! And that hit the stanchion at the back, and for a moment, a little optical illusion crept in. I thought that was in the back of the net. I think he was panicked into doing this. And just for a moment, as he went for it there and looked towards goal. And Perini is coming off, and also Wallace. Two guy is on. John comes on, and Kenny Miller. Two million pounds from Hibbs, developing a young player. One of the best prospects in the game, of course. Oh, brilliantly brought down there. Going to have a go. Well, the old touch is still there. Really took Contamin right out of it. And not a bad effort, you know, for his first touch getting in here. There goes Amoroso with Van Bronckhurst. Into Van Bronckhurst, he'll try the shot at goal, and the covering of this Kamarnik defence has been absolutely immense. Swept in, better and it's in for Billy Dodds again, would you believe? Well, I cannot stress enough what this man has done, despite all the talk about getting illustrious strikers to Ibrox. It's a rescue act again by this man. Pouring his way into goal. It was only one thing he had in mind, get the forehead to it, and he did. And we've got exactly 15 minutes remaining. We're now back to square level. I don't think he'll be happy with this. Look at the space Rainer has now. And it goes, and Dean Deleuze there again. Ian McPherson have been superb. Reyna. Little ball to Konchelskis. Where's he going? Now Ferguson might want to go himself. He does. Tries to get in there. Miller's done it! The young sub puts Rangers ahead. First real meaningful goal for the club. And Rangers now lead by three goals 
sixth to two, and no wonder they're hugging him. For so long in the game, Rangers looked as if they couldn't penetrate the defense, and the youngster kept immensely cool to put it away. There's the bus forward by Ferguson. Full credit to him for laying the foundation for it and then swept in by Muller. Well, this man must have thought just before halftime at 10 or so minutes before it that he had the best chance of putting one over Rangers here at Rugby Park that he's ever had before. And then came that dramatic change in circumstances. Sudging forward again, this time McCann with it. It's not offside, and it should be. It is. Two guy does it. An intelligent run forward, and that puts it beyond any doubt. The Tuckies player scored his first league goal. And all that pressure has paid off, and the referee, I think, might even book for the way they went to the crowd there. Yes, I think he's got his... Uh, Card out, and he's reminding two guy of his responsibility of self-discipline. But at this moment, in the euphoria of scoring the fourth goal, look at his run forward. A great ball there by McCann. He might have taken the tourist route to go, but the long way around, it still paid off. And I think there's just a slight suggestion of a smile on that man's face. And I don't think he's a local anesthetic for it either. There's two guys, that's a beautiful ball forward as the final whistle goes. Ferguson thwarted at the end. An absolutely astonishing game in many ways, with Kamarnock playing splendidly in that first 35 minutes. Andy McLaren outstanding, gaining the penalty kick as he did, converting it himself, and then going through in that wonderful uh, ball there, remaining measured and cool in the way he took it, even though Klaus got a touch. And then the comeback by you know who with a penalty awarded after that run on the outside for McCann, it was Dodds who took it and put it away. And then in the second half, with Rangers pushing on the pressure, crowded penalty areas, Dodds coming up, and absolutely positive headed into the back of the net. And then young Kenny Miller on as a substitute, and again, so many players around him and getting that final touch to put it through. And then an exquisite goal at the end by two guy after great play by McCann putting him in there. Camley putting it into the back of the net eventually. But oh, it was a very narrow game in many ways for 11 men against 10 at the end of the day. The final score, Kamarak 2, Rangers 4. Yeah, it was good because I think uh, at the end the result was the most important thing today because uh, in the beginning of the season, uh, if you're not under percent uh, of the, your condition, I think it's important to get the right result. Andy, a fantastic start for Kilmarnock today. Um, you must be disappointed that they didn't hold on for victory. That's right, I was going to tune out nothing after about 15 minutes. Just came out of the box pretty sharp, you know. I thought, tune out, it was a great start, I mean, but just kind of had on it. There was a critical point in the game when Kilmarnock were ahead and they lost a man. Now, yes, it was a foul, possibly it was a yellow card, but did you feel your players unfairly influenced the referee to get him booked again? Yeah, I don't know why you're asking me, because everybody could see that it was, it was in my opinion, it was even a red card, not, not a yellow card. But when you see the pictures, you may see that oh. the referee was not going to book him and your players did influence him to well, make Well, then it was a mistake from the referee. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't want to uh, say the, the, the player needs a red, a red or yellow card. The referee has to do that, but it was clearly a foul. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to him to give a yellow or red card, but to my opinion, it was a real card. Dick Advocate answering the questions after the game. Bobby Williamson, the Kilmarnock manager, is in the studio with us this afternoon. We'll come to that instant in just a moment, Bobby. But uh, how did you feel overall your team started the game yesterday? Yeah, I thought the opening period, the first 30 minutes, we played exceptionally well. Uh, we, we had a right go at Rangers, scored two, and could have been three up. But uh, this ending off certainly gave Rangers impetus to get back in the game, and they certainly took it. And credit to them, they scored four goals, albeit against ten men. But we we'll still put the ball in the back of it and they deserve credit for that. Well, as I said to Dick after the game, it was 2-0 when you lost a man. Let's have a look at both incidents. First of all, McGowan's first yellow card. I don't think we really have any arguments here. I've not got any arguments with, with him at all, to be honest with you, Jim, but I, I felt the referee took his time in making his second decision. 
no doubts about it. Kevin did impede the, the, the fellow, but I think we Rod took advantage of that. The ball was running away from him in the second incident, and uh, Fred Dindle was was uh, mopping it up. And well, uh, here it is. Here yeah. you can see it in all its glory. Yeah, Rod sees that Fred's coming across and taking the ball. He was never getting there. He's went down. And it is a, it's certainly a free kick, but yeah. the referee doesn't seem to be taking any action until Amoruso runs up the part and a yeah, few the, the critical get point there is that he, he, I guess he'd awarded the foul, but yeah. he wasn't going to book your player until the Rangers players intervened. Yeah, that's the way it looks, and uh, it's disappointing that players do react that way. I'm not saying Kamarnock players wouldn't react the same way in the same position, but that's disappointing, and to, to lose the man after after having such a good start is, is very disappointing. That's so the only words I can say is sum it up, to be honest. How did you feel at that stage of the game? You're 2-0 ahead, it's only the first half and you've gone down to 10 men. Did you, did you have any hopes at that stage? No, you always get hope, Jim, but um, it's certainly a tall task to ask the players to hang on as long as they had to do in it. I'm disappointed for the, the paying customers who have come along, they're, they're cheering on their team and then they see we've got to play backs to the wall stuff and uh, it's not the style of football. I, I want to encourage to play, but we had no option in that stage. You did say beforehand you'd have a go at Rangers, you certainly did. And a man you've, you've taken a real chance on this season, Andy McLaren. We, we know all about his, his personal problems, mm -hmm. but he's really turned it on for you yesterday. Yeah, he's a very good player. I and mean, when, he, when he plays like that, everybody can see the ability the boy's got. He's got good pace, he's right or left foot. He's, it's not a problem to him, he'll have a go. And you can see that he's very confident, he wants to take a pen. <laughs> he wasn't letting Alan Mahout have that ball, was he? He certainly wasn't. I don't think he was letting anybody have it. And, uh, and good luck to him, he, he's got the confidence to take it. Now, the more I watch this, this is such a quality finish. Yeah, he does well with it. Uh, he's naturally right-footed, but there's, there's, there's no question. He, he just takes on his left, and there's no doubt in his mind he's going to strike it with his left. Where other right-footed players might try and get back on his right, but it, it's quality play for Andy, and he, he deserves all the credit he gets. Now, obviously, from the club's point of view, you were taking a chance with him. You only gave him a three-month contract as a, as a trial, for example. W will you tie him up for longer? Yeah, I said uh, after the first week, I would like to have kept kept him a rugby part for a longer period and uh, that's still in my mind to do that but um, it's just a case of the chief exec getting around with his agent and getting uh, getting it thrashed out but uh, as I said after the first week I knew Andy still had the talent to prove he's still a big player. Another great contribution for Rangers yesterday from Billy Dodds, he scored the two goals that got them back level but the third and fourth goals here, the ones that killed you off Bobby, defensive quality, what did you think? Yeah Kenny Mullers, he's a, he's a quality player we Kenny and he, he just wanders into a position where the ball breaks to him and uh, that's just striker's instinct. I'm disappointed that nobody got close to him here on this occasion. But he's finished it well and we've not really any complaints about that at all. And Archie in commentary thought two guy might have been offside, but when we see it, it's just a perfectly timed ball from McCann. Yeah, it's disappointing. We, we've got to defend that better and uh, we'll have a, have a talk about that tomorrow and hopefully work in a few things. But that was disappointing. But as I said, credit to Rangers. It's a quality ball through from McCann and, and two guys took it extremely well, but I would expect us to deal with that better. I take it you can take a lot of positive things from that game? Yeah, certainly. As I said, for the first 30, maybe even the first half, I felt we competed well against Rangers and we, co we caused them a few problems and uh, scored a couple of goals. And I said we could have had three. Uh, the good edit and we've never seen the other chance at Martin Baker. Well, I'll had. show you one now. I'll show you one okay. now. A very good effort from Kokar from a corner. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good ball in and Christoph's found himself in the right, in the right place at the right time. Unfortunately, he's no man to hit the target. But um, he's capable of putting them in on other occasions. And unfortunately for us, it never went in. But um, hopefully we can take our chances in the next coming games. People say that the provincial clubs don't expect to take anything from matches against Rangers and Celtic, but I think at one stage yesterday you must have fancied a victory. Oh, before the game I thought we could have. But um, when you take into circumstances that Gary Holt's got to get back to centre half, mm -hmm. Peter Canell was playing in a strange position for him as well, mm -hmm. and a young lad, I, I felt we coped quite well. But um, it was inevitable, I felt, once we went down to 10 men, that Rangers mm -hmm. could get back in the game, and they certainly did. And, so I said credit to them for scoring their four goals. But looking over the, the two games, a victory at St Mirren, defeat, an unfortunate defeat possibly against Rangers, reasonably happy with the start? No, I'd like to have won yesterday, but um, that's, that's happened. We've got to go to Parkhead next week and hopefully pick up something there to build on us for the rest of the season. OK, Bobby, we'll talk more in a moment. But we're going to... Well, let's just confirm uh, yesterday's results for you. Kilmarnock 2, Rangers 4. Kilmarnock playing the second half with 10 men there. That means there's one still to be played tonight. The big game between St Johnson and Hearts at McDermott Park. And Bobby, both clubs making a reasonable start to the season. St Johnson maybe unfortunate at Ibrox last week and, and Hearts unfortunate not to, not to win at Easter Road. Yeah, they had a couple of chances last week, Hearts. And uh, to be fair, Hibs had a good chance as well. Uh, i never seen the whole match, so winners were shared. And uh, as you see there, St Johnson scored a very good goal last week against Rangers from a set piece. 
And at that stage, they were very much in control of the match, and hopefully we'll have taken some confidence from that going into this one. Yeah, I'm sure there'll uh, they'll be one to build on their performance of last week, and uh, if they get the breaks tonight, they might just uh, get the three points, but uh, it'll be a very close thought for it, affair. It was a great Edinburgh derby last week. Uh, we showed it on Scott Sport Plus, and, and Hearts had their chances to score. They really did. Yeah, they did, and uh, the keeper was called upon a few occasions. They made some reasonably good saves. Uh, as I said, Hibs had probably the best chance, or the most mm -hmm. clear-cut chance when uh, the boy Agatha got through. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he made up for it yesterday, of course. Yeah, he scored two good goals, we just seen on the TV there, and uh, I'll hold, hold him in good stead for the rest of the season, I would imagine. And I suppose all, all Scottish clubs are looking to hold on to their young talent, and a boost for hearts this week, Scott Severin signing a, a new long-term deal. Yeah, he's a good young player, he's a very strong lad, he gets himself into the box and gets an end of things, but he tidies up a lot for hearts as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jim will be pleased to have uh, acquired these services for a bit longer. OK, Bobby, thanks very much indeed. Now, we gave you the results of last week's World Cup competition on extra time yesterday, but for those of you who might have missed it, the lucky winners who gave the correct answer of Ali McLeod were Martin Coleman from Port Glasgow and Alistair Johnston from Roan House Castle Douglas, who both win VIP hospitality packages for two to all four of Scotland's home World Cup qualifying games this season and next, courtesy of the We Red Book. Well done to them. That's it from us this afternoon, but join us if you can for Scott Sport Plus tonight at 11.15 for highlights of St. Johnson versus Hearts and another chance to see the goals from yesterday. Join me for that. Stay tuned for Derek Johnson and Football First right after Scott Sport. From Bobby and me though, bye-bye. And here on board, tonight's sports show is at 12.20. And coming next is Coronation Street. many a fullback over the years, but Andy McLaren found alcohol a much more difficult opponent. Now rebuilding his life and career at Kilmarnock, the 27-year-old is conquering his demons and again producing the kind of form that once had him tipped for a full international career. His double against Rangers suggests that still might not be out of the question. That's went well so far. It was two games of the past two games of, I feel I've done well, you know. Uh, getting the two goals in Sartre was a bit of a bonus, you know. I think it would be okay. How close are you, do you think, to, to getting back to your very best again? I think I've still got a bit to go, you know. I feel... My second half wasn't... Well, although we're down to ten men, I feel my fitness has still got a bit to go, you know. But I'll get that through. It's, it's, it's only match, match fitness I need, you know. My general fitness is OK. Would it be fair to say that you're just happy to be playing football at all at this level after what you've been through? Uh, I'm getting a buzz now. Back yeah. getting a buzz on the Saturday morning, you know what I mean? Sleeping, no sleeping too good before the games and that. No, I feel feel great about it again. Was there ever a time where you thought you, your, your addiction to alcohol was going to finish your career? I thought that <laughs> not too long ago. I thought yeah. that you know, you, you, even when I was coming back, it's always the back of your mind. Not I mean, you're no the same player you were. But I think I've, I've proved the past two games that I've, I've still got it. Is this the last chance for you? Do you have to get your act together here? Definitely, aye. Uh, I knew that a few months ago. Not I mean. The gaffers can give me a chance to come down here. I'm not going to let him do, but basically I'm not going to let myself do. You're under a fair bit of pressure though, aren't you? I mean, you're saying you don't want to let anyone down. That brings with it its own pressure, doesn't it? Aye, well, I suppose it does, aye. But I've let myself down that badly in the past, you know what I mean? But I've, and I, I know this is my last chance, you know what I mean? So I'm, uh, I'm determined to, to get it right. So, so what is the, the situation now? I know you're on a, a three-month deal right now. Is there a chance that you might extend that? Yeah, well, the, the middle of talks are now. We're looking to get an agent doing this sometime this week. The, the gaffer said he's happy, and I'm happy here, so hopefully we're going to get something tied up soon. What about in the longer term, Andy? Because uh, at one time you were touted to go on and win a full international cap uh, and have a full international career. Is that something that, that in the fullness of time you'd like to oh, achieve? Definitely. I, th I think I'm getting back to somewhere the way I know I can play, but the more games I get, the more my confidence is growing, you know what I mean? And I've, I've looked at play against Rangers, you know what I mean? I don't think I looked at a, a, a place, you know what I mean? So I think, I think I've still got, still got a chance to get a spot in camp, and, that, and that's, that's what I'm aiming for, you know? But when you look back, 
Do you regret the, the, the wasted years? Oh, of course, of course. And I can't, but I can't get him back now, you know what I mean? I, it's no use sitting, sitting worrying about what I should have done and what... It's all in the past now, you know what I mean? I've got to look to the present and, and that's... Scotland counts very much in my mind. It seems to be a modern day disease because we've had high profile players in England like Paul Gascoigne and, and Tony Adams who've admitted they, they, they had a problem. Why, why do you think that is? You know, it's difficult. You, you would have to play yourself. Do you, uh, you've got a lot of time in your hands, you know what I mean? Just finish training somebody at 12 o'clock, you know what I mean? Young man with money, you know what I mean? It's, it's an easy thing to slip into, you know what I mean? What would you say to, to any youngster who may think at the moment that he's developing a problem in that, that respect? Oh, to see somebody, there's, there's plenty of people there to help, you know. I, I attend Alcoholics Anonymous personally, and that has been great for me, you know. And I was in a, I was lucky enough to get uh, specialised help. I was in a clinic as well, but, but if, if they do think they've got a problem, to, to see, speak to somebody as soon as they can. If, if they think it, but at the end of the day, they've got to, they've got to know their cells, you know what I mean? How, how do you handle a stick here? Because uh, the other day when I was down here, you were, you were taking a fair bit of ribbing off the, the likes of, of Ian Durant. Ah, that's right. Ah, it's, uh, it's, it's good, but no, I mean, it makes me feel part of it, no, I mean, rather, than, rather than just sitting a bit feeling sorry for myself. And, and I'm no, I'm no shy getting it with myself, no, I mean, so I can handle that. Aber to provide cover for their injury-ravaged defence. And Ali McCoy finally signed on for a final year at Kilmarnock. I think it's, it's, it gives you more benefit if you come back, do a pre-season, and then see how you feel. And um, I'm not sure my pre-season went that well, by the way, but there was certainly a pulse at the end of it, and that convinced me that I, that I wanted to have one more year. 